People want to know why we do what we do. They want to know where we're going. We're two guys with big hearts. We love telling a good story. And we're damn good at it. We're local realtors who love serving others. We are relationship-based and data-driven. We love showcasing our corner of the world. And we do it in style. We are the local voice in the community. It's time to turn on the mics. And let's get to the show! Hello, everybody, and welcome. I am excited to be here in the Betty D studio, sitting with our guest today, who is someone that you should definitely know. If you've ever moved in your life or known someone who moves in your life, you know that the quality mover is worth its weight in gold absolutely worth every penny that you put into it it helps make the move process go well but what you probably didn't know are there are a lot of people behind a quality moving experience that make that success happen well stay tuned because you're about to find out today who some of these people are and how that process works but before we get to that let's hear from our sponsors all right, friends, we are excited to showcase one of our sponsors, Bellworks Chicagoland and Hoffman Estates. Bellworks is new to the Chicago area, but the vision has been around since 2008 in New Jersey. We decided to set up our office and studio here at Bellworks because the energy within the building is off the charts. Working around other businesses and entrepreneurs in this modern space is unlike any other place available here in the Northwest suburbs of Chicago. From the unique design to the vibe of being around other businesses and entrepreneurs, we were hooked from the first time we walked through the door. The vision behind the Bellworks model is special, and in our opinion, the future of how we will work, live, and play. They coined the term Metroverb, Metropolis and Suburbia. My friends, it is the best of both worlds, a city vibe, but right here in the suburbs of Chicago. Bellworks is a destination for business, culture, and life unlike any other in our area with world-class offices, one-of-a-kind retail space, delicious dining options, awesome event spaces, and much more. The build-out is still in the beginning stages, but trust us when we say that it is a special place. Bellworks is unique and that it is a special place for any size business. Businesses have the opportunity to grow without ever having to leave Bellworks. They can start with a private office within the collaborative co-working environment called CoLab. When they grow to where they need more space, they can get a private built-out spec suite within the ready-to-wear suites. And if the business keeps growing, they can have a suite built up on the third and fourth floors. The building is truly meant to create a community to help businesses thrive, grow, and be successful. The building is beginning to come alive and growing with tenants every single day. We are having a blast here at Bellworks and have enjoyed our new routines from working out in the Fit Lab gym that is available on the lower level to our coffee and lunch from fairgrounds in the square. Bellworks is bringing urban cool, urban comfort, and urban convenience to the suburbs. To learn more about Bellworks, visit www.bellworks.com or reach out to us. We would love to connect you. All right, guys, Jason here. You got to come visit us at Bellworks. Great Wi-Fi. They got the fairgrounds coffee as well. Come <laughs> chill and hang out with us. Uh, today, we are super stoked to be here uh, with the owner and CEO of Midwest Moving and Storage, uh, Louis uh, Toledo, uh, a.k.a. Louis the Mover, you might know him as. He's, he's been in business for quite a long time. He's a passionate man who believes in taking care of his people and delivering a high level of service. And uh, we've had the opportunity to work with Midwest Moving and Storage and his team, and we can honestly say, uh, it's high, high end. So welcome to the show, Lewis. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Excited to have you on today. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm excited to talk about this. But before we get rolling, uh, we've got to talk a little bit about what's in our cup today. So uh, bef before we do that, every show we like to highlight a different local beer that somehow connects to our guest. Today is no different for that. Um, today's choice is an obvious pun on our guest company's name, but their name is not all, all that they have in common. Midwest Coast Brewing is located on Walnut Street in Chicago and has a great list of unique beers. Midwest Coast Brewing is also on the move around Northern Illinois as they are quickly growing their span and where you can find them on tap or on in the can. But the most important reason why I picked them today uh, is their Pack Tech Recycling Program. What the heck is Mike talking about? Let me explain. <laughs> so every four pack or six pack of beer comes if had, with. If I had a dollar every time I ask myself, what is Mike <laughs> talking about? I would be rich and wouldn't have to be here right now. Just throwing that out there, buddy. Everybody <laughs> who gets craft beers gets yeah. four cans or six cans, and they always see these little plastic 
they're called pack decks. Uh, they basically hold the beer in place. However, when you're done with them, you just throw them in the garbage. Huge issue for the environment. Obviously, uh, people are addressing that. And Midwest Coast Beer obviously partnered up with another Chicagoland carrier, Reuse and Recycle Co-op, that starts recycling these. So if you have, like myself, probably have 100 of these things in your garage, you can stack them up, bring them over to Midwest Coast, and as tall as your stack is, you get a free amount of beer and a pint. That's pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. That's and cool, yeah. And the reason why I like it is because... Midwest moving in storage takes their sustainability in the environment. Obviously, moving is a lot of cardboard, a lot of packing, probably a lot of waste. You'd be surprised to hear today they take sustainability serious, and they're trying to get that out of the environment as well. So very happy to talk about that with Lewis. So let's drink up, guys, and get started. All right. Cheers. I'm sticking the water today, gentlemen, but I'm there in spirit. Cheers. <laughs> so, Lewis, before we kind of dive in uh, too deep, uh, just – can you give it, our guests a little bit of knowledge about who you are and what you do? Well, sure. I, I'm going to go way back to 1955. That's when my parents moved, uh, immigrated from Puerto Rico into uh, Evanston, Illinois. And I was uh, born and raised there. Uh, and there was eight of us living in a three-bedroom apartment. We, we, my, my dad made about $15,000 a year growing up, so it wasn't a lot of money. Yeah. And... Uh, he instilled work in me at a quite a young age, uh, so I, I got a paper route at 12 years old. Uh, I used to make about $15 a month, and uh, I would have to pay my parents uh, half of that for rent at 12 years old. 14 years old, I moved on. Hey, that, a- that's pretty steep. If you were to consider <laughs> inflation, that's probably still pretty expensive. That's half your paycheck just in rent at 12 years old. Yeah. yeah. Nuts. Well, I, I consider, I think the rent for the three-bedroom apartment back then was about $230 a month. So yeah. I don't think you could live anywhere for that anymore. Or if you could, you wouldn't want to. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> now, is the place where you moved in Evanston, is it still there? Yes, it is. Do you bring family members by? Because, like, I bring my kids by where I grew up. On occasion, yeah. I've driven by and said, that's where I grew up. And, you know, this is the... Uh, this is the alley I played in, you know, chasing the stray cats. And <laughs> Is it the same as my kids? They don't care? Yeah, they don't care. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I started doing that with my I, kids. They're six years old, and they're like, Dad, I don't care. Like, take me to Dairy Queen or something. Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. All right, sorry, yeah. I derailed you. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, I moved on to, uh, as, as I was going through high school, I uh, got a job at a True Valley hardware store making $1.65 an hour. I was finishing high school, and I was contemplating whether I'm going to go to the junior college or if I'm going to work. Opened the newspaper up, and I saw a job opening for movers for $4.50 an hour. I mean, who wouldn't go for that from yeah. sixty to f- over $4? I, I put, it's a big I, pay bump right there. Yeah. 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 I put on my muscle shirt and went and applied. Yeah. <laughs> you so, put on the smallest shirt you yeah. had so you yeah. looked muscular? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They hired me right away, and... I think the first week I worked about 80 hours and uh, uh, almost died. I had a dresser fall on me. and uh, uh, Like going up the stairs or something? How old were you at this time? 18. 18, okay. Yeah. So I was 18 years old, and and, uh, the old trucks used to have two hooks on a ramp, and uh, 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 going the the old time movers would make us walk the new guys walk backwards because it was always harder to walk backwards. <laughs> so I'm carrying a dresser walking backwards. I step on the ramp. One of the hooks broke, and the dresser fell on my chest. Oh gosh! Uh, but I still came to work the next day and uh, <laughs> kept working. And hey, you guys hear that out there? You calling in sick for no reason? He went to work the next day. That's was, work ethic, guys. Yeah. Like step up your game, please. Like there's no mental yeah. health days when you're a mover. <laughs> yeah. Make it happen. That's yeah, awesome. so I worked my way up, uh, uh, learned the business, and within a year, uh, back then, uh, they called it a D license today. It's a Class A for a tractor trailer, but I tried to get one of the guys to take me to go get my tractor trailer license, and nobody would. Uh, back then, I think they felt like job security. You know, if someone else doesn't get a tractor trailer license, it's good. They got the, they, they got the job. Yeah. Uh, so one day I walked into the office. There was nobody there. The tractor trailer keys were hanging up behind the dispatch board. So I grabbed the keys, hopped in the tractor trailer, took it to the DMV myself. <laughs> 
and the DNV, that wasn't a very good experience. Uh, fortunately, the guy let me take the test. I uh, pulled up to the DNV on the wrong side of the street. Uh, as we know, movers. Wait, is, is this like a 50 foot? Like yeah, a, okay. it, it, ba back then they were 48 footers with the tractor. So, so this yeah, is a big, this so is. So it was a big rig. You stole a rig. Yes. <laughs> you yes. drove it to the DMV, illegally parallel parked. Yes. Right? And you were trying to get a license. Absolutely. Okay. So, I'm following so, you. So, so <laughs> the, uh, the instructor comes out and says, who has this truck? Why is this truck parked the wrong way? Get it moved. And, and. And he said, where's the driver for the truck if you're here to take a license? Because somebody with the license is supposed to bring you. Yeah. And I says, I didn't bring anybody, but I need this job really bad. And he's like, well, I'm not going to test you. I'll get the other guy to test you. <laughs> so took me around the block. I got my license and uh, went back to the Sounds shop. Sounds like he was scared. <laughs> got a raise and, uh, and uh, started driving uh, more short hauls and, and long distance, started going on the road a little bit, learning the business more. And I, I didn't really like the road. So uh, 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 See, one of the things I like to do. Let me stop you there because I'm, I'm curious. One, when you first started working, were you kind of in the Evanston, Chicago? Like Yes. So, I mean, that's very tight streets. Yes. Tight driving. Yes, lots of viaducts. You have to be careful yeah. that you don't oh, yeah. top your trucks. Let's be honest. Did you get stuck in a couple of viaducts? Nope, right. never. <laughs> Come on, no one, I, no, I, no one will hear. Come I on. have pulled <laughs> up to a viaduct and said it's too low and backed out, but you know, yeah. I've never ripped the, 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 the top off. I've had plenty of them ripped off in my 40 years of business. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. But I mean, like, your, so your first couple of weeks of moving and driving those tight city streets. Did you bang up a bunch of cars or nothing? Mm, I think the only time I really banged up a lot of cars was uh, in 1979 and 1980. We had, uh, probably before you guys were born, uh, yeah. we had a couple of snowstorms. So we had the snowstorms. It was uh, the Ed Ber uh, the Ed Belandic mayor mayoral time, and yeah. and he actually lost the election because of it because they had no snow plowing program for the oh, streets wow. and we had more snow than we ever had those two years and uh, going down the streets in Chicago a truck wouldn't fit so that you'd be going down the street side swiping cars it was just the way it was it was it was a nightmare back then so so I have a family member during that time period who would uh, as a side job would plow streets and he said the snow was so bad in those years he took a small car and hit it with the pl a city plow and popped it right over onto the curb yeah just kind of destroyed the car well, well sometimes you didn't even know there was a car there yeah. because it never got below freezing for like 40 some days straight so it just kept snowing and snowing and it it, it, it became like a concrete so you survived those first couple oh. of years of driving oh yeah yeah that I, was. I just i always envy people i look at it today like if i'm in the city i'm like that's the hardest job driving a, a trailer anywhere in the city those are tight streets well, what I really like to do is I love doing the Evanston third floor to third floor walk downs to walk ups <laughs> in Rogers Park. So and uh, we used to have what's called a hump strap today. Most of the guys don't know how to use a hump strap, but we used to put a bunch of boxes on our back, put it on the hump strap and and, and go walk down the stairs with, you know, 200 pounds of, of boxes or uh, and uh, that was the real mover back then. I mean, I know you can't see in the camera, but like, this guy is fit. So like, I, you know, for for any age, you look like a fit guy. So I could imagine when you were moving, were you just muscles upon muscles at the time? Uh, I was 195 pounds, and I was pretty, pretty strong, pretty buff. Like 195 pounds, like me with like this belly <laughs> and from this, or like a ripped 95. No, no, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, that was a ripped. Yeah. You must have looked like like uh, a wrestler or bodybuilder by carrying this stuff up these flights. Yeah, right? I, I, that was true. I looked like a bodybuilder. One of one of the things that I used to love to do is when we were moving people, is uh, the people would you know the customer would be absolutely happy with us, and I said, "Can we take a break?" So me and my team would get down, and and the customer would say, "Yeah, go ahead, take a break. You guys are doing great." Yeah. And I'd get down and do 50 push-ups, and <laughs> jump back up and say, "Thanks for the break. Let's get back to work." <laughs> You're crazy, man. <laughs> oh, we, used to, we used to have so much fun. Yeah, it's also awesome. what led you. Like that's that's an amazing story, by the way. Um, I, I feel like I wish we could like put video to all that and like retell your life story from there because I think there would be a lot of fun in that. Um, but what led you from there to? 
to where you're at today? What well, was that trigger? Uh, I always made sure that I marketed myself to the customer. It, the company I worked for did was a big local mover. They did about six to 7,000 local moves a year. Wow. So I always wanted to make sure I had referrals for myself. So I had business because I was competing against 30 other drivers. Cool. Yeah, sure, yeah. So I'd always make sure I, I got cards printed up, Louis the mover, said make sure you request me. And uh, load, lo, uh, uh, you know, lo and behold, it was I was getting six or seven requests sometimes some days and my owner wow. was like you are incredible how are you doing this and uh, I, I, I told them how and and uh, and I told him hey I want to start my own company one day so he he gave me the blessing and and uh, at 22 years old I I went out to search to buy a truck. I didn't have a lot of money. I couldn't get any credit. The bank shot me down a couple times, asked my dad if he co-signed. He said no. So finally, I got one of my friend's dads to co-sign for a $15,000 loan, got a moving truck when I was 23, and the rest is history. You know, By the time I, I got one truck, I quickly went to three trucks in six months and just kept growing the business. Yeah. When you give that type of service and like, Getting to know you through uh, the feature Love Local and uh, through this process uh, uh, with the Zoom calls and stuff like that to get prepped here, like you're uh, you're very driven and very passionate about what you do, and it comes off with the service. Like I feel like you're you give, and if you're starting at 12 years old, <laughs> you're working, you're hustling at that time. You really had 12 years of not too much work. Other than that, you've been working your butt off since. Oh yeah, uh, but that's that's really admirable, um, and. I feel like the way you've done it is um, it, it just by like being genuine and like delivering that high level service. Like, is that from your parents? Like, where does that, where does that yeah, come from? My, my dad was one of those guys that went five years without missing a day at work. You know, it was, mm -hmm. he was up early every day, but he was a factory worker. Yeah. That's what he wanted for me, but that's not what I wanted for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So let's talk about where you, you know, they do these things on social media. It's like where you started, where you're at now or whatever it is. The, the cool kids tell me that. But it, so like you started with one truck, then you had three trucks. What is Midwest moving in storage now? Like how big are you? Because I don't think people know that. Uh, I think uh, my last insurance policy, I insured 68 vehicles. Oh, awesome. Wow. So. <laughs> That's quite large. Yes. And, how, and actively like movers. How many people do you typically have working in the office well, supporting? Uh, Pre-pandemic, we had about 200, and it's been a little more difficult now. So uh, I say during the peak times, we'll, we'll, we'll hit about 125, and, and the non-peak times, 75. I mean, to me, I always use the quote of, like, talent attracts talent. And so obviously they could see how passionate you were in the beginning, and people just kept gravitating towards your company. I mean, you can't get to 100, 200 people without having strong work ethic, being good to your people and delivering good service yeah there's well there's nothing i wouldn't have my guys do that i wouldn't do myself and i even yep. get out on the trucks with them on occasion and uh, for real difficult projects jobs uh, yeah. i help them out but we, i assume we, you make <clears throat> them go backwards oh uh, yeah I mean, if, you're the owner, <laughs> my, if you're the owner they're going backwards. yeah my achilles yeah. have had enough backwards yeah, you know? yeah, yeah for sure <laughs> just check it there uh, we, we were out for the uh, love local uh, featured video shoot I was really impressed by their attention to detail uh, when it comes to being able to, uh, yeah, to be able to help pack and move your house. There's horror stories that are out there about businesses um, and moving companies, but your attention to detail uh, was uh, from your team was like second to none, uh, and, and really impressed. And being a, as local realtors, like we see other moving companies, but there was there's a high, like a higher level there for sure than just your average movers. Well, we, we try to listen to our customers and what's really important to them. Uh, one of the things that we have that's proprietary is uh, we designed and have what we call a home protection kit on every truck. So when we go into a customer's house, the first thing we do is obviously introduce ourselves. Second thing we do is we start laying out runners, protecting the floors. We have door covers. We have uh, uh, banister covers, uh, wall protectors and we protect the entire home. Uh, and we, we put carpet shield down on any carpet might be in the home, so uh, everything's protected. And, we, we, and right away they're at ease because as we know, moving is one of the most stressful three things in a person's life. Yeah. So it's how we start a move that r brings their anxiety level down. I could yeah. see that, and we, we were trying to talk Smart. before this, you know, we have so many customers or clients that they're closing on their house, so they're packing up their truck. 
they're waiting to go to the closing to get the money, clear the bank, and then now they're going to be closing on their new house later that day. And all this time, they don't know what you're doing with their stuff, but you're driving around somewhere. And the last thing they want to do is worry about what you're doing. Oh. They, they want to make sure that yeah. the, the closing went well, the walkthrough goes well, and everything's off their mind. So talk to us a little bit about how the benefits of using a company to do it versus doing it yourself in terms of moving. Well, uh, I, I, the most important thing is, well, I'll, I'll give you a story. This, uh, this was about 20 years ago. I had a customer that I wanted was moving to Madison, Wisconsin, and he had about 22,000 pounds of household goods. That's how we estimate. We estimate how much weight is in the house, and uh, we know how much weight our professional loaders can put in a truck. And uh, I gave him a quote for $6,000. This is 20 years ago. Today, it probably cost twelve. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, he, probably he sc- thought, he probably scoffed well, at that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> he says, oh, I'll do it myself with my, he says, if you do it yourself, the, the rental trucks are smaller. You're going to need many more. Your guys aren't experienced at loading the trucks. Yep. You don't have the professional quilted pads to protect the furniture. You're going to have damage. In the long run, it's going to cost you more money. So he decided, I'm going to do it myself. Yeah. So he rented three trucks which he ended up having finally four trucks. And one of the drivers that was driving the truck up to Madison with the rentals rolled the truck and he had a disaster. He called me up and, and, and told me the story about how much his move cost him three times more <laughs> than what he would have paid to have me do it. So there's really, you have to consider- You get what you pay for. Yeah. You, you have to consider <laughs> the cost when you do it yourself because you're gonna have damage yeah. and there possibly could be you know, as we know, as, as guys, people would always say, hey, I'll buy you some pizza and beer. Come help me move. Yeah. If someone gets hurt on that job, who's going to pay for their lost wages and doctor bills? Oh, yeah. Plus, Plus I'm, yeah. A, I'm a prima donna, so I just, like, whine and complain if you ask me to help move. That's true. That's down, definitely I'm true. You're tired. busy. Yeah, yeah that's, I'm tr- that's true. myself yeah. the whole time. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I feel like... It, I, like if I brought my buddies in to help me move, I don't think that the move would go very well. I feel like it would take longer, and I feel like some things would be broken. And like I don't know, I don't feel like they would be that efficient. I've moved yeah. twice in my life. So the, <laughs> the first time I was young and dumb, and so I was just moving out with my girlfriend at the time. And we bought a place, and so we just moved our own stuff. The amount of time and energy that it takes to pack it, to get it loaded up, to beg your friends to show oh, yeah. up on time, to get there. Once we got there and unloaded it, we were so exhausted, no one wanted to put it away. So when I saw the video that you guys had put together on, on you have a program that they'll come pack it and then they'll come to your house and they'll unpack it and lay it all out, that's amazing. Like, I can do that. I just show up, the stuff's all laying around, yeah. I put it where it needs to go. It's peace of mind. It's so worth it. If anyone's thinking out there, do it yourself, please don't. Like, it's just not worth the headache and frustration. Or backache. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. So I also kind of heard a little something about like some of the niche now is, is we have a lot of uh, baby boomers that are kind of downsizing their house or they keep their house till they need to go into assisted living or senior living community. Talk to me a little bit about that. Does that is that a different niche for you guys? Is that something you guys have to handle differently than a, you oh. know, a another group of movers? Oh yeah, we handle uh, the moves differently when we're dealing with seniors. Yeah. Uh, and uh, because uh, one thing that the seniors are doing is they're, they're leaving a home that they've lived in for 30, 35 years. They're downsizing, going into a one or two bedroom uh, uh, active living community is the ones we usually move them into uh, more than assistant living. I think they go into assistant living after they're in an active community. Yeah. Uh, we have to help them distribute their, their uh heirlooms to their children all over the country well, so we'll do that too that. Yeah, okay. so those are some of the things we do but but mostly when we do the seniors is they're usually full packs and full on packs because otherwise they'll be living in a house full of boxes and they'll say everything's missing yeah for yeah sure. <laughs> all right, so you guys do a lot of great things can you tell um, our audience uh, just some of the services that you guys have with midwest moving and storage 
Yes, well, when I got involved in the business, I only knew about local moving, and then I found out there was long distance moving, and then I found out there was Department of Defense moving. Actually, the Department of Defense is our largest customer in our industry. Oh, wow. They do 430,000 moves a year domestically. Whoa. The military is the largest employer with 2.2 million people. Which so, that makes sense. So people going from base to base, that kind of stuff? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And here in Chicago, we have a Great Lakes Naval Base. Back then, we used to have the Glenview and Fort yeah. Sheridan too, but those have been closed down since. Uh, but Great Lakes is a training base. So we do quite a bit of moving out and into the base. So, uh, you know, that, that keeps us quite busy. And one, one thing that the government does do is they vet the moving companies. They just don't allow anybody to do it. So we have to go through a, a huge vetting process. They have to make sure that our, our warehouse is licensed and insured for, uh, it's hooked up direct to the police department, fire department. We have uh, a security system uh, in order to store storage for their military members. So. Oh. Huh. And I'm assuming like the actual workers that are helping move sometimes need clearance to get on yes. certain bases or certain areas? Okay. Yes, we have to get a certain security clearance to get on the base. You can't have a criminal history. So it's... it's so you're, uh, you're out, Jason. It, it eliminates a lot of people. <laughs> you yeah. win some, you lose some. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> some. some of the other things that we do, some of the other services we offer is we got into uh, uh, commercial moving. So we move a lot of offices. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, currently... Today, we have the City of Chicago moving contract, so any sh City of Chicago governmental agency that's moving, relocating, uh, whether it's a library, a fire department, uh, it's the art, we even do work for the art museum, uh, so uh, they have to they call us and they, they move under that contract. We also have the state of Illinois moving contract. So right now we're clearing out the Thompson Center that was just sold. Uh, and that's about an 18 month project, moving 55 agencies out of there. Oh, wow. Uh, so. Uh, and is that the Chicago Office Movers brand that you have? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, several years ago, I started another brand called Chicago Office Movers specifically to deal with office moving, uh, even though Midwest moving, that brand does office moving yeah. as well. Uh, but uh, uh, with Chicago Office Movers, what we did is we were signatory to the Teamsters so that we can go into those uh, union buildings downtown uh, that require a union because they have union elevator operators. Yeah, I can imagine that would be a requirement. Uh, right. And yeah. some of the other uh, services that we provide is uh, uh, we'll provide freight services also. So... Uh, we just moved a, a company by the name of W Diamond from here to uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, and they had machines that they were moving. So we have riggers that loaded onto the onto the Conestogas and uh, drive it there. And we flew our movers in to supervise the job, hired some local guys, and we have a network of commercial movers throughout the country that we can call on. So. That sounds amazing. So in yeah. order to do all of that, in order to achieve all of this, I'm assuming you have a tons of talented people that work for you in order to get that done. Absolutely. They all learned it from me. <laughs> <laughs> Modesty is yeah, our yeah. best oh, policy. Yeah. Somebody right? get this guy I really, another beer. I, I really am <laughs> humble. I, I will tell you, I did do a little bit of research, and you should not be humble because there are a lot of awards that your company has won over the years. And so, like, I could just rattle off five or ten of them. But, you know, tell me a little bit about one of the one or two that you're most proud of that you guys uh. have achieved. Probably the, the two that I'm most proud of, I just recently won, uh, uh, Negotials Now, I've got Business of the Year, and that's one you know that, that recognizes a business that uh, uh, offers quality, excellent service, as well as gives back to the community. Yeah. Uh, the other one is uh, Move for Hunger, uh, and that was issued to us by the International Association of Movers, so we were recognized all over the world as as, as gathering the most amount of food uh, for food banks as a moving company. Uh, we, I believe it was close to 44,000 pounds of food wow. that we donated. So that was a very prestigious award for us to get. Wow, I, I did, in researching it, I did see a couple other ones like the Daily Herald has given you a C-Suite Award of the Year in 2018 
And one of your members, which we are very happy to know and work with, Carrie Ann, has won the Leader of the Year and the Woman of the Year by the Schaumburg Business Association. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. We're, uh, we're real proud of Carrie Ann. Carrie Ann really keeps our culture and our branding and our people happy. She's uh, a true advocate, yeah. I think. Seeing her out in the community and meeting her at different chamber events, too, like she represents your brand. Like she wears it on her shoulders. And if you look at, I, I go into like the Everything Schaumburg pages or all those types of groups that we have here locally, there's a lot of them. But when people say a moving company, people talk about Midwest moving and storage. Like, and you've earned that right. Like, that doesn't come like just because of whatever like the only way you get that type of love is if people truly believe in the type of work next year it'll be 40 years it's pretty awesome man yeah. can you well, believe that though no yeah. i mean that's 40 not, years and you're still I, 27 you know, how does that work my my actual business plan <laughs> when i started when i was 23 is i was going to retire by i was 28 so you know i'm still on the five-year <laughs> so, plan <yeah>. to retire <laughs> I, I had that dream too i remember i remember <laughs> telling my buddies you failed at yeah. that part but you've done so yeah. much better yeah. things on the other I, side i remember yeah. telling my buddies i'm going to be retired time i'm 40 and it was like 21 <laughs> i'm 41 now and i'm like yeah i'm not going to be retiring anytime <laughs> soon um but i want to touch base and you talked about uh <laughs> the uh, move for hunger and, and i feel like as we've gotten to know your business more you have a very big place in your culture about giving back why and where does that come from well it comes from my upbringing because you know i was born with nothing and i had to earn everything and and uh, uh i had a couple of friends uh, growing up in Evanston, I used to play basketball, football, and baseball, and, and they had a couple of, uh, uh, I remember one of my mentors, my, uh, my best friend's dad worked for Sears, and he was always like, when you get older, you should open up a company, you, should, you shouldn't work for anybody. You know, he had mentioned the uh, Minority Business Enterprise Program. He was working for Sears. This was 1967. They, he was looking for minority companies to buy from at the time. Yeah. Uh, and that's when the real movement came in for uh, 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 diversity. And uh, I, it was instilled in my, in my brain. And I said, you know what? I, I'm going to – I, I want to own something. He, he, he gave me the confidence and, uh, to do it. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Advice you would have to somebody who's 22, you know, who's Ooh, looking. Good question, Mike. Yeah, who's looking and saying, man, I, I really want to go out there and start a business or I want to, you know, I want to, I want to be my own boss. What can you impart them over 40 years of wisdom? What, what is one or two things you'd want them to know? Well, I think the, the today you have uh, network associations. You have uh, associations like we have a movers association. You might have a, 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 a bloggers association. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you get involved in an association and you talk to people and peop you'll see that people will help you and guide you. I mean, there's no secret sauce. It's just you have to be driven and want to do it and not be afraid you, of failure. you got to earn it, right? Yeah. <laughs> you got to well, put in the work. Well, the, the bottom line is that if you don't try, you don't get. So, you know, anybody that hasn't failed hasn't tried. So yeah, Totally. So I want to uh, kind of come back to uh, your moving company. And right now is uh, we're getting ready to come into uh, moving month. I might be saying that wrong, but I know May Well, moving season. Yeah. It's uh, May 15th usually kicks off moving season. Cool. So uh, uh, in, in being in real estate, a lot of people are moving this time of year. So what is some best advice you could give to somebody for their upcoming move? Well, one of the most important things that when you're looking for a professional mover is that you find a mover that is licensed by the Illinois Commerce Commission in the state of Illinois. It is illegal to start two men in a truck, pin it up at Jewel, and charge $75 an hour. You have to be licensed. Yeah. You have to be it's insured. To yeah. You have to have- There goes our plans for the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't get like past the truck part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the things that when you move with an unlicensed mover is that there's no guarantees that you're ever going to see your stuff again. For yeah. sure. Okay. Sure. Cause they're going to load that truck up. They'll come up with a rental. They'll disappear. And you don't, you don't know. Your money and it, your stuff is it, gone. It, it, it's gone. Or if one of the guys gets hurt on the job, as we mentioned before, you're going to end up paying doctor, doctor's uh, wages and, and lost wages. Yeah. So, uh, you know, doctor bills. Um, another one of the things is that uh, if they're not licensed, uh, it is illegal. You could get fined $1,000 if they find out that you knew that they were an illegal mover. Oh, wow. so, really? 
Yeah. So um, again, yeah. check with the Illinois that. Commerce Commission uh, to. Is that kind of like the B Better Business that's Bureau that's kind the of same thing? Question. Like yeah, DB? and okay. that's that's one of the other organizations you should check. But the Illinois Commerce Commission regulates uh, the transportation of household goods. So check with them to see if the movers license. They also take excessive complaints, yeah. and they also let you know if they're license is in good standing because sometimes movers will be licensed but they didn't pay their workman's comp bill or their liability coverage bill and then they get their license gets suspended yeah. uh, they get notified right away so their license gets suspended so uh, check on that uh, check with the better business bureau to see if there's an excessive amount of complaints uh, go on google reviews to see if there's an excessive amount of complaints uh, Get some referrals from the mover, um, and uh, let's see. Uh, see how long the mover's been in business. See if the mover has an actual brick and mortar facility, because if he's operating out of a post office box, that's a red it's flag. It's not credible, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's that's true. Is his home address? Is his business name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not e good. Exactly. So the best advice I could give him is don't call anybody else. Just call Midwest, because yeah. we're the best. Amen. You heard it, guys. Call Midwest. <laughs> I, in the show, kind of we kicked off. We talked about our beer, which I'm almost all the way through. But um, we talked about sustainability, and they're trying to divert plastics, you know, from the environment. I just envision you guys having a bunch of cardboard, metals, packing, you know, those little peanuts that are everywhere. So, like, what are some of the things that you guys are doing to help divert that kind of waste from the landfill in order to make an impact in the environment? Well, one of the... Well, we do many, many, many things, yeah. first of all. But uh, some of the important things that we do is we take the cardboard and paper from when we unpack these jobs, and we have a trailer that we fill up. We probably take uh, a trailer load to uh, international paper for recycling once every two weeks. I think we get about $5.25 <laughs> for taking that trailer for the – for. <laughs> But, it's not. But, it's not it's fiscally not the, smart. It's, right? yeah, it's environmentally it's, smart. It's not yeah. the money. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's the it's environment and keeping yeah. it out of the landfills. Uh, we also have uh, metal recycling. So any kind of metal we may get off of any moving jobs that that people want to get rid of, old file cabinets, whatever it may be, uh, we'll recycle that as well. Uh, some of the other things that we do is we have what's called the boxless move. So instead of providing cardboard boxes, we rent you crates. So we own these crates. Okay. And yeah. you pack in the crates, and then when you're when you get moved and unpack, we go and pick up the crates right. again. That's actually really smart because, like, I, the last time we moved, I did not have a packless, you know, crate or whatever. It was basically cardboard, and I had a garage full of cardboard for like a month, and I had a little recycling bin, and I had to cut it up into little squares and try to shove it in my recycler. Oh, yeah. It was such a pain in the butt. So, like, I'm glad to hear that there's a way if I move again, I don't have to deal with it. Yeah, I was, I was kind of upset in my neighborhood. I was just driving down the street yesterday, and it was garbage day, and I saw someone with eight wardrobe boxes broken <laughs> down sitting in the – at least they had it by the recycling bin, Yeah, you know, so. You should but leave you your still, card. You should put your card in their door, you know. Yeah. You like <laughs> the best thing to do is to, to call the move up and they'll come and pick up the, the used materials and and sometimes we do if it's if it's if the materials is still good we'll donate them to other people yeah, yeah. for reuse so uh, that makes me feel good that, that you one you'll pick it up if you don't you leave it you know. two you're actually giving it to somebody to use or repurposing it for paper again instead of just adding stuff into the well the uh, landfill. Uh, and another thing that I really uh, hold my drivers accountable for is that when we pull up to a house that we turn off our trucks right away we don't allow our trucks to idle for more than five minutes uh, sometimes you pull up and you see these trucks idling for two three hours even in the winter time there's no reason a truck should be idling you know uh, yeah yeah, I mean, Makes for sense. the environment, but also five dollars a gallon. Oh yeah, whoa, well, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. outrageous. It's been, uh, Somebody needs to go buy a Tesla. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll get to electric vehicles soon. Yeah, I that think would that's, be awesome. But yeah. it, it's, I think they are inventing electric trucks, right? That can pull or haul yes, a load. Absolutely. Okay. I, uh, I, uh, I have a respect for how you built your business. I only like the grassroots, like. The blood, sweat, and tears as you build it, uh, but you, the people that work for you and with you love you. 
uh, which is huge. And then you also believe in like taking care of the environment. So you're not just looking at like, how can I deliver a high level of service uh, with moving and helping those clients, but you're looking at how do I take care of my staff? How do we take care of the environment? And you're, I feel like your, your perspective is, you're looking at everything you should be doing. Where you talk about like a lot of moving companies don't have, uh, have all that in place. Uh, your online reviews, uh, they're pretty sick, man, for moving companies. Uh, <laughs> moving companies, it's you look at a lot of them out there and they're not rated very well. Your online reviews are very good. What do you all think you'll do best and why are they so good? Well, uh, uh, one of the things that I get a lot of compliments on uh, and uh, the reason we get a lot of five-star, we don't like four-star, we want five-star reviews. Man. Go for broke, uh, do it. Yeah. And, <laughs> Earn it. Uh, is that, uh, you know, we make sure that we use our proprietary home protection kit on all the homes that we go into. We yeah. show people that we care. We pad everything in the house. We have mattress bags to, ba uh, to, to bag their mattresses to keep them from getting dirty or torn. Uh, we stretch wrap their couches and all their upholstered furniture. Uh, and the guys just show care. And uh, that really gives people you know the feeling of giving them a five-star review so we caring goes a long way i yeah. feel like you could care if you care and mess up i'm cool with it like if you care and if you're vulnerable like oh man let's fix it but uh, i'll give you a five-star review yeah. all day if you well, own it well, but that yeah. caring piece is huge <laughs> well 99.9 percent .9 of the time we don't have claims on the jobs but when we do have a claim we take care of it and they still give us a five-star review so yeah. you know it's it's part of the business and sure. it's how we handle it after the fact we don't sit there and avoid the phone call we have yeah. great customer service that's yeah. the big deal look stuff's going to happen you're going to break something something's going to happen in transit it's just a, a natural it's, fact it's, it's the way it. that you yeah. handle it when it's brought to your attention i think that that recovery that also makes a big deal well, so, so, you wouldn't have been around for 40 years if that was you didn't handle things the right way things happen right <laughs> oh, oh absolutely yeah. i can give you a story of when things didn't go well sure uh, yeah. the, the, i would love to hear that oh, yeah i i, I it, it, this was, uh, let's see, I was living in Evanston at the time, so it was about 25 years ago, and uh, I used to watch the WGN News, so I turned the WGN News on, it was about 6 in the morning, and uh, I wanted to see what traffic was like, because I was, a, back then I used to drive all over and sell, and it was a Gapers block on 90, so they said there was a truck burning, so, you know, I, was, I look. And I see Midwest moving. On the side oh no! Of the truck. So <laughs> the worst nightmare. <laughs> it was it was my biggest nightmare. The I, coffee cup I, just drops my, out of your my, hand. <laughs> at, back then, I did all the sales, and I knew the three customers that were on that trailer because it was going. Two of them were retiring in Arizona, and one was going to San Diego. And one of them, one of the guys, was like an ex-military guy, and he was talking about all his awards and all his, you know, he kept all his memorabilia from yeah. the war. And, and uh, I really, really, my, 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 my gut just sunk, and I, I got dressed quick, went to the office, called every one of them, told them, I, I really apologize, but I have bad news, and I'll try to salvage whatever I can, but the fire department's trying to put the trailer out right now, and it's on fire. And it wasn't anything that we did that was negligent. What, what ended up happening was is, is the trailers have landing gear, and they have these brackets that hold the landing gear from the side. One of the brackets was loose, so we took it over to the trailer doctor in, in, in Des Plaines, and he, as he was welding the bracket on, the trailer caught fire and it But went, it took a while and, for yeah, it to, he yeah. was, It was inside, but they managed to get it out and that caused the gapers. So that was probably one of the most, uh, <laughs> and, and, oh, uh, the, the best part of the story is that we took care of everything uh, that they had. All our customers were happy and we ended up getting referrals and referrals from these people because we stood up to the plate. That's so awesome. a good strategy is let WGNs report that your car's <laughs> on fire on the that's highway. Kind of, that's kind of good PR. In a, yeah, I a guess. Way. <laughs> All PR is good PR, right? Yeah. What, what well, is what yeah. is the most unique thing you've moved? Like I, I envisioned like some famous like Elton John's piano or something. Like what is something oh, that gosh, it's a good I story have, you tell at cocktail parties? I, I have some, uh, some uh, a lot of them. But uh, I want to say the planetarium has the big world. Yeah. 
okay? So they were painting the room, so they needed the big world moved out. So that was quite a challenge. It came in two halves, and it oh, was wow. huge. So, so you've literally that, moved the world. We moved the world. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's a tagline uh, that, if I ever that, heard it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Uh, there's there's a lot of really, you know, great. Great stories, but I probably need about six more beers. Yeah. <laughs> and Lewis, I feel like we could talk to you yeah, all day. You're just you're letters. such a great conversationalist. Uh, we're getting ready to wrap up. Um, I know your yeah, cup is say, getting more, empty. More beer, I'm um, out. So. But one of the questions we like to ask the guests to come on this show is, uh, what is your favorite part of opening the doors every day? Oh, my 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 favorite part of opening the doors is that I I I love to see what I've you know, what, what, what we have as a team, everybody working together, the culture that we have, uh, making people happy, knowing that I'm not that crook out there that's on the FBI most wanted list for walking away with people's stuff. So, you know, that's... It's a good list not to be on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's Well, you'd be surprised. If you go uh, Google it, you'll yeah. see there's a lot of movers on there. Yeah. <laughs> I'll definitely <laughs> check it out. A mover with integrity is always yeah, a good thing. exactly. Right? You, you got to find one and stick with them. And I think we have found one with you, Lewis. So I, yeah. uh, I appreciate it. My cup is empty. Cool. And so, you know, unless you got any other questions. No, I think it just if, you know, a lot of our audience, uh, it's moving season. It's nice outside. So if somebody wants to get a, a hold of you for their big move uh, and learn more about Midwest Moving and Storage, how can they do that? Well, uh, they can go onto our website, MidwestMoving.com. Uh, they can Google us. Uh, they can call us. Uh, uh, they, we are on Facebook. We're on social media. So we're easy to find. Cool. Sounds good. So, yeah, guys, hit them up, uh, Midwest Moving and Storage. We wouldn't have them on our show if we didn't believe in uh, them and their ability to be able to deliver a high-level service. And they're just – you touched on it earlier, but they care. Uh, and that goes a long way in business and in life. Uh, so thanks, Lewis, so much, man. Appreciate you. Well, thank yep. you. Absolutely, Lewis. I appreciate you coming on the show today and in hearing what all Midwest Moving and Storage has to offer in the local community. Uh, and for Mike and Jason, thanks for listening to Love Local today. Every community is made up of unique and interesting people. Lewis is just another example of that. So until next time, support local, love local, and we're all stronger together. Peace out, friends.